All right. Hey, everyone. Ready to dig into some seriously cool teaching stuff? Always. What are we looking at today? So we've got excerpts from this, get this, vintage teaching guy. Vintage. Okay. I'm intrigued. Right. It's called, and I'm not making this up, inbound 817-1946-3961-7159-3835.pdf. Snappy title, huh? Catchy. But hey, sometimes those older resources have the best stuff. What's inside? You would not believe the stuff in here. Honestly, I was a bit vintage averse at first, but this is full of surprisingly relevant tips. Like what? Give me an example. Well, right off the bat, it dives into how crucial listening comprehension is. Oh, tell me about it. I always say that's the foundation. Yeah, but this guy takes it even further, saying it's even more important than speaking, especially at the beginning. Especially at the beginning. That's interesting. Yeah, which I have to admit made me rethink some things. Really? How so? I have always been big on getting students speaking early on, you know, to build confidence. For sure. Makes sense. But this guide argues that if students can't really understand what they're hearing, all that speaking practice might not be as effective. Makes you wonder how much they're actually absorbing, right? Exactly. And then there's this point they make about real world English. Like how often do our students actually encounter perfectly enunciated, grammatically correct sentences in everyday life? Never. It's messy out there. Right. It's fast. It's full of interruptions, slang. Meaningless noises is what yeah. they call it in the guide. And they're not wrong. <laughs> I love it. They even have this hilarious example of, oh, it's like someone trying to give directions, but they keep getting sidetracked. Oh, my gosh. Yes. That's real life. And I think that's the big takeaway here. What's it's more beneficial to equip students with the skills to decode meaning from that beautiful chaos. So true. And that kind of changes how we think about pronunciation, right? A hundred percent. Speaking of which, I was blown away by how this guide tackles that whole accent thing. Oh, yeah. What they say. It's way ahead of its time. Acknowledges regional accents, stresses consistency over some idealized accent. Wait, so you're telling me I don't need to channel my inner Shakespearean actor when I'm teaching? Nope. No need for drama school, thankfully. That's a relief. Right. The guide even argues that misplaced stress can cause more misunderstandings than, say, a slight variation in vowel sounds. Oh, interesting. Got an example. They use adversary. Like if you stress the second syllable instead of the first, it could sound like adversary. Totally changes the meaning. Wow, you're right. I never thought of it like that. It's a small detail with a huge impact on clarity. It's not about being perfect. It's about being understood. Exactly. And that takes the pressure off everyone, teachers and students alike. Huge weight off my shoulders for sure. Hmm. Okay, so we've talked listening, pronunciation. What else is up this vintage sleeve? Well, they do get into language drills, which I know are a staple for a lot of us. Oh, yeah. Drills can be great for practice. Totally. But they can also get a bit, you know, repetitive. Like robots. No one wants that. And the guide acknowledges that. It stresses making drills meaningful. Instead of just drilling for the sake of drilling. Right. Like one example they use is comparing the cost of food using cheaper than. Mm, okay, I'm listening. So with beginners, you could keep it simple like, are apples cheaper than oranges? Right. Simple vocabulary, easy okay. comparison. Exactly. But then with more advanced learners, you could have them compare the cost of, I don't know, living in different cities. Ooh, that gets them thinking. Or even discussing the real-world value of things they're actually interested in, like concert tickets or video games. So, so it becomes about their lives, not just some grammar rule. Exactly. Which, speaking of engagement, brings us to another teaching challenge. How do we get those deeper classroom discussions going? Oh, the struggle is real. Some days it feels like pulling teeth. Well, this guide, my friend, has some wisdom for us. And it all boils down to asking the right questions. Okay, now you're speaking my language. What's the secret sauce? So they illustrate this point with a story about the Emperor Akbar and his advisor, Burbal. Ooh, a story. I love a good story. So Akbar has this dream where all but one of his teeth fall out, right? Yikes. That's never a good sign, even in dreamland. I know, right? And of course, he's freaking out, naturally. Who wouldn't? So he calls on his advisors and they're all like terrified of saying the wrong thing. Understandably. So naturally they tell him it means all his relatives will die before him. Like, way to cheer him up, guys. Oh no, that's brutal. What happened next? Okay, but then Burble, this advisor known for his wit, comes along. Ooh, I sense a plot twist. Akbar tells him the dream and Burble, after a moment, is like, your dream means you'll outlive all your relatives. Wow. 
Talk about a positive spin. Right. Same basic interpretation, totally different delivery. That is brilliant. And what a great way to illustrate the point. So what's the takeaway for us teachers? What are we doing wrong with our questions? It's about crafting questions that go beyond just recalling information. So instead of, what did Akbar dream about? We ask, why do you think Akbar reacted negatively to the first interpretation? Oh, I like that. It makes them think about the why. Exactly. Or even to make it personal, have you ever had a dream that you needed help understanding? That connects it to their own lives. I'm loving this vintage guide more and more. Me too. It's all about those levels of complexity, pushing students toward deeper analysis, personal reflection, all that good stuff. You know, sometimes I forget about the simplest things, like using visuals. Oh, totally. Visuals are so powerful. This guide reminded me of that. Of course, it mentions flashcards, which we talked about earlier. Classics for a reason. But then it mentions things like, get this, the overhead projector. The OHP. Now that's a throwback. I know, right? Like, who uses those anymore? But it got me thinking about how important that visual element was. Absolutely. And this guide is big on using visuals effectively. Like using real objects. Relia, they call it. Oh, I love Relia. Bringing the outside world into the classroom. It's so much more engaging than just talking about something. Right. Engaging all the senses makes a huge difference. I remember back when I was learning another language, my teacher brought in all these exotic fruits. Oh, fam. It was amazing. We got to see them, touch them, smell them, made the vocabulary stick so much better. Exactly. Uh -huh. And what I appreciate about this guide is that it doesn't just list a bunch of random tools. They actually tell you how to use them, right? It's exactly. It connects the tools to activities. Flashcards for pronunciation, Realia for role-playing. They even suggest using pictures from magazines as starting points for creative writing. Oh, that's a good one. I'm always looking for ways to make creative writing more engaging. It's content struggle. Any other vintage gems on that front? how they recommend using the magazine pictures specifically. So this is where things get really interesting. Mm. The guide actually points to extensive reading as a key driver of fluency. Not just an add-on. Not at all. They really emphasize it. And not just any reading, but reading authentic materials, mm. things that genuinely interest students. Yes, that's so important. I mean, I think about my own journey learning another language, and so much of it was through reading. What kinds of things were you reading? Oh, everything. Novels, magazines, even comic books. If it was in the target language, I devoured it. That's awesome. And it clearly worked. But how do we, as teachers, help our students find materials they'll actually be excited about? Right, because forcing them to read something they hate is just going to backfire. Exactly. It all comes back to knowing your students, their interests, their backgrounds, what makes them tick. So, like, if they're into sports, find them sports magazines or blogs in English. Exactly or music, travel, whatever their passion is. Meeting them where they are with content they'll actually connect with. Absolutely. And by doing that, we're not just teaching English, we're fostering a love of language learning. And that's what it's all about, right? It's amazing how relevant this vintage guide still is. Right, timeless principles. Exactly, like we often get caught up in the latest trends in tech, but this guide reminds us of the basics. The fundamentals that never go out of style. Like that emphasis on listening comprehension. Oh, absolutely. Training our students' ears to decode that real world English, which let's be honest, is rarely picture perfect. So true, and how that ties into pronunciation. It's about clarity, consistency, confidence not chasing some idealized accent. Right, and I love those practical tips for making drills more fun and engaging. Oh yeah, that cheaper than example. Using food to teach comparisons. So clever, making it real for the students, connecting it to their lives. Because at the end of the day, it's about them getting it. And speaking of getting it, that Akbar and Burble story about asking the right questions. Still thinking about that one? <laughs> Me too. Such a powerful reminder that the way we ask questions can make or break a discussion. It's not just about getting them to talk, it's about getting them to think. Absolutely. And then all those creative teaching tools. Who knew the overhead projector could still be relevant? Hey, sometimes those old school tools are the best. Right. Though I have to admit, I'm a big fan of using real objects. Oh, me too. <laughs> Makes such a difference. It's like bringing the world into the classroom. Exactly. And then, of course, that final point about extensive reading with authentic materials so crucial and again it's about knowing your students finding materials that light their fire finding those books those blogs those podcasts that'll make them forget they're even learning english yes because when they're hooked that's when the real magic happens could agree more well this has been a fantastic deep dive totally agree learned so much me too
And I hope everyone listening feels inspired to go out there and try some of these techniques. Yes. You got this, teachers. <laughs> Absolutely. Until next time, happy teaching, everyone.